Hello, this is Christine O'Connor. I'm Assistant Head of School of Food Science and Environmental Health in Cahill Brew Street. And today I'm talking about discipline based research. So I'm just going to reflect on my educational research um, on, since my career in DIT. So my background, I have a chemistry degree. Um, I have a PhD in chemistry and I also did a postdoc in DIT um, and worked as a consultant for Mazars on alcohol analysis. And then in 2000, I started lecturing in the School of Chemical and Pharmaceutical Sciences in Kevin Street. Uh, during that time, I also did a part time master's in pharmaceutical quality assurance. And I also worked in uh, both the forensics lab and the uh, company, pharmaceutical company Organ on Ireland um, as a quality advisor in both situations. In 2006, I did the postgrad certificate in third level learning and teaching in the DIT. And in 2012, I did the bridging module to upgrade that to the postgrad diploma. In 2014, I moved schools um, to the School of Food Science and Environmental Health, um, where I took on the role as assistant head. And I also in moved campus as a result. In 2016, I completed the higher education policy module. And just recently, I have graduated with an MSc in applied e-learning. So that's really my professional development. Um, I'm also a member of uh, a few professional bodies, such as the Royal Society of Chemistry, the Institute of Chemistry of Ireland. I attend annual Irish um, research colloquia and I'm a member of the European Chemistry Thematic Network and the in Irish Institute of Biological and Inorganic Chemistry. So just um, reflecting on where my educational research started, well, it was really taking CPD modules in uh, the Learning and Teaching Centre early on in my career that stimulated and inspired me to pilot different initiatives. So one of the first ones there was the piloting of WebCT, where myself and Dr. Claire MacDonald um, piloted uh, WebCT in the School of Chemical and Pharmaceutical Sciences on behalf of the Learning and Teaching Centre and then we would have disseminated that out to other schools and across the Institute on how we have used it. Um, our rationale for really wanting to pilot it was we wanted to support our diverse first year students um, and we wanted to make sure that we had one central portal for all their information. Also from early on in my career, I had a, an interest in program document writing um, and I got some exposure to that. Um, I was a tutor for large first year groups and I also used the information in relation to the WebCT piloting to present a paper at an international conference um, in Istanbul. So both Claire and I presented that paper. It was very well received and that was really my first sort of launch pad for um, educational research. So as I said, I was working with my colleague, uh, Dr. Claire MacDonald, who you've already heard from today. And uh, we would have worked quite closely in developing sort of strategies and piloting them and evaluating them just really to address and support our, any issues that our students were having in um, learning chemistry. Our colleagues Dr. Sarah Rowe and Dr. Michael Seary joined us and we created this chemistry education research team and this actually grew even bigger uh, with other colleagues uh, such as Dr. Barry Ryan and Dr. Julie Dunn over the years. Um, we were lucky to have some of our initiatives uh, recognized. So um, we were award winners of the NARTL Award 
back in 2009 where we were presented with the award by President Mary McAleese and we Claire uh, Macdonald and I also won accommodation for the President's Teaching Excellence Award from Brian Norton back in 2005. So it's nice to see that your educational research is being acknowledged and recognised both at an institute and a national level and Claire and Michael would have also won international awards for their teaching excellence also. So just some of the examples of the themes that interest me over the years. There's curriculum design, supporting diverse learners, contextualization, technology enhanced teaching and research informed teaching. And when I look back now on my career, these five themes have really played a big part in feeding into activities uh, that I have interested me over the years, both on module program development um, and uh, a lot of activities that I would have put energy into. So the first one there is curriculum design. And as I already mentioned, I really enjoy preparing program documents and I, I enjoy writing uh, new modules. Um, and I really feel that this is because I'm quite good at seeing the big picture. I've always been listening to uh, different stakeholders, what the students want, what the employers want, what industry and research stakeholders are looking for, and bringing that back and embedding it into the curriculum. I also have researched the area of curriculum and design and alignment. Um, and I prepared an institute level resource pack, which is available on Arrow if you want to have a look at it. And now that I've progressed in my career, I have a lot of experience in coordinating program and school reviews, chairing and reporting on program and school reviews. And I'm also a committee member on college board, AQAC and academic council. But Prior to that, er, from early in my career, I would have always read the minutes from those meetings to make sure that I was informed on what was going on at both the college and an institute level. I've been actively involved now recently in creating advisory groups. Uh, these are stakeholder groups that inform on the program development. Um, so they will be made up of external uh, stakeholders from industry and academia who can advise us on our program development. And there in May, I had an opportunity to go to Bangladesh um, where we were on a UN FAO um, United Nations project, which was assisting the curriculum design um, as DIT consultants in developing a food safety degree for the country of Bangladesh. So that was very exciting and a high impact project to be involved in. So as you can see from the two papers I've quoted here, that the area of curriculum design has been of interest to me for many years. The next um, theme was supporting diverse learners. So again, um, this goes back to putting a lot of effort into that induction and early orientation. Um, I would have always run study skills workshops at the start of year, the year. Um, I'd also build in tutorials into modules in a very structured fashion. And this was really to demystify the assessment process for the students so that they were constantly practicing um, accessible material, uh, doing calculations and getting a lot of practice of what might come up in the exam. I always tried to put a context on what they were learning. So give them real world examples or related to something they might see in the newspapers or case studies. I always encourage students to get involved in peer mentoring. So helping each other in the classroom and I always tracked students attendance so I could follow up on students who may be in trouble. Um, and from time to time I would try in using games, science games, 
mnemonics so these are like rhymes and a step-by-step -step approach really to help and support students in learning any kind of challenging classroom material. So again you'll see by the two papers here that I've quoted you'll see that Claire MacDonald and I have been working in this area for a long time. More recently um, I've been involved in a project with Dr Barry Ryan who you've also heard from today in developing a sort of a, a portal that will support um, students again making that transition from second level into third level. So the students that we're targeting, secondary school students, FETAC students and our own first year students to support that diverse cohort. The third theme that interests me is contextualization. So again, uh, many years ago when the forensic course was uh, developed in uh, the School of Chemical and Pharmaceutical Sciences, I made it my business to go to Strathclyde University uh, where they've been teaching um, forensic science for 30 years prior to us. And what I did was I looked at their lab manuals, I talked to the staff there, I wanted to develop uh, practicals that would be as engaging as possible for the forensic science students. And we've also, as a CERT team, chemistry education research team, developed practicals in the areas of environmental chemistry and medicinal chemistry over the years. I also used to teach an introductory nanotechnology course. And again, I used to try and contextualize that. And you'll see I published a paper on that. Um, and I disseminated the work at a conference um, because students didn't know what, where would they see nanotechnology and why would it be used. So again, using examples in your module, in your classroom, making sure that those examples are also translated into the exam paper. So using the real world kind of examples or problems in as questions in the exam papers and also looking at your lab manuals and your um, workshops or assessments or assignments and making sure that they're contextualized also. The uh, fourth theme was technology enhanced teaching. So again, as I said, over the years, I've used web courses, I've used wikis, discussion boards and online quizzes as part of my classroom activities. I've also used pre-lab questions and videos with students to prepare them for the laboratory. I've used Peerwise in and out of the class. And again, Peerwise is quite nice for, again, supporting your peers. Um, and it's a nice tool for using as continuous assessment. Um, I've got the students to generate their own videos um, and put them up on YouTube as part of their assignments. Um, and I've also tried out some blended delivery uh, by creating um, videos of my lectures, embedding them, embedding them into Google Forms with a series of questions based on the video and hosting them online so that um, a mixture of face-to-face -face and online activities happen throughout a module. And also I use uh, student individually generated ePortfolios as part of one of my fourth year module assessments. So I suppose what I learn from the Learning and Teaching Centre, I always try and translate back into my teaching and then I try and use that to evaluate and disseminate moving forward. And you'll see again that this has been an ongoing learning process for myself, but also the application has continued for many years. Um, and the last theme there is research informed teaching. So I take um, educational research as serious as I do my scientific research. And I try and apply any kind of educational research into my teaching such as student-driven activities in class, technology-enhanced classes, 
the use of mobile learning in and out of the class and that context-based learning. I think they're all very rich and can be used looking forward to future-proof our programs and our module and our teaching. Um, in terms of my scientific research, I have four PhD students and one MSc student at the moment. And what I try and do is use their projects as well to embed examples into my teaching and into my classes. So it's nice to have that postgraduate research in my scientific discipline ongoing so I can bring that into my undergraduate projects and in undergraduate modules uh, so the students can connect to that also. As I mentioned earlier, I've recently graduated from the MSc in e-learning. And again, I always like to challenge myself into something that I don't know about. So my project was developing an app to support technology enhanced learning for third level academics by creating a type of toolkit, which really had um, case studies from the literature and uh, just sort of resources there for third level academics. Why I created an app was that I wanted to learn about app technology. It, I felt it was a gap in my skill set and I knew it would create a large learning curve for me, but um, I felt that it's something, this project will be something I may use moving forward in my career uh, for other projects. On completing the MSc in e-learning, I now have an e-portfolio of my work over the um, years of my MSc. And you can see that um, my WordPress, which is public. I also have a slide share uh, where I have some resources on Peerwise there. And I have lots of other platforms where my sort of research metrics will be public. Um, and I also created a YouTube channel as part of the MSc. Um, because I actually had to record some of my lectures over the years. So um, my YouTube channel is called The Christine O'Connor. Um, I had to put the word the in front because there was actually lots of Christine O'Connors on YouTube. But um, just looking at the bottom one here that I've highlighted in red, the medicinal chemistry introductory uh, lecture has over 12,000 views internationally. Um, in a two-year period. So obviously the public like medicinal chemistry. Okay, so that's a, just a whistle-stop tour of some of the work I've been engaged with over the years. And my tips um, are really look at what issues you're having in your teaching, in your classroom, and look at strategies to overcome those issues or that will assist you or your students moving forward. Um, pilot your different strategies, uh, monitor them and evaluate them. Get the feedback from students or staff and capture that. Disseminate that evaluation um, at conferences and publish the work if you can. Create a network uh, and a supportive network and a critical network as well. So even within our uh, chemistry education research team, we would have always critiqued each other's work and assessed in proofreading material and given each other ideas or food for thought. So it's quite nice to have some sort of network, having a critical friend there to push you along um, and keep you interested as well. Build on your day job to produce reusable resources um, and look at those methods or strategies that you're using that you can roll them out as well in future or they may even translate into other activities that you're engaged with. And just give things a go. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time, but just the students will appreciate that you're trying to improve on what you're doing and just build on it as you progress. So that's where I'm going to finish up. If you want to talk, connect or collaborate with me, please feel free, free to contact me. Um, and I'm always happy to meet for a coffee and a chat. 
and I wish, wish you all the best of luck in your own research. Thank you.